In August of 3114 BCE, the Mayan long count calendar was created and tracked the universal cycle, a version of history and time where everything will eventually end in the universe resetting and beginning a new cycle. Many interpreted the Mayan long count calendar to end in our 2012, leading to the Earth's eventual destruction on that day. But the truth is that the Mayan long count calendar actually ends on August 8, 2023, marking the destruction of your wallet. Kafka is a game changer for Star Rail, and for those of us with mommy issues, you're gonna wanna pull for her or Jinglu. And if you want to learn how to build and play Kafka, you're in the right place because today your favorite not American but has lots of guns girly is playable. And I'm gonna teach you how. My name is Raxophone and let's talk about Kafka. Kafka's weapon choice is incredibly fitting, seeing as her biggest fans are bottoms, which is also what enemies will be after you have a build Kafka. Oh, to be on the dominated side. Kafka's entire kit revolves around damage over time and manually triggering dot effects. Her skill deals lightning damage and also triggers any dots that are already on the enemy. That is to say, if you are already damaged, Kafka will make you worse. Yes, even emotionally. She also has a talent that gives Kafka a follow-up attack once per turn after an ally uses a basic attack on an enemy. Usually your healer is going to trigger the follow-up, which has a chance to apply a shock damage over time and generates 10 energy for Kafka. Whoa, if you multiply that by 20,000, you get 200,000, which is actually the amount of subscribers we can be at soon if you hit that button. That's crazy. Imagine. Uh, subscribe, please. Her ultimate deals a chunk of damage as well and has a high base chance to shock enemies for two turns. Enemies that get shocked also immediately take a hit equal to that shock damage over time. Her ultimate is a key part of her kit that you're going to want to make sure to use often, but what makes it even better is that with her second passive from traces, she'll activate all damage over times on enemies hit, which drastically increases her effective ult damage. Between her skill, talent, and ultimate, Kafka is essentially enabling damage over time units, turning characters like Sampo, Luca, Serval, and Himiko into five-star units. <laughs> So sorry. Her other two passive traces will give her five energy back after defeating a shocked enemy and increase her base chance of shocking from her kit by about 30%. Actually, it's exactly 30%. I don't know why I said about. It's also worth noting that whenever she triggers a dot with her ultimate or skill, it doesn't take away from other dot durations. So you're still getting the full dot damage with or without Kafka. Between her skill spam, ultimate, and talent, there's actually reasonable ways to spam her ultimate once every two turns. One turn ultimate is achievable for Giga Whales under specific conditions, but for most players, you're going to be ulting once every two to three turns, with three being the standard. I'll talk about how to do the two turn ult later because it has to do with your team, build, and light cone, but you can increase your overall damage by a fair bit with that setup. Her technique is an AoE that does lightning damage and has a chance to shock enemies when you enter battle, because who wouldn't be shocked after seeing that? The optimal trace path for Kafka is to focus on her ultimate, then skill, talent, and then basic attack, though you likely won't be using her basic attack much anyways. Part of what makes Kafka so busted is that she breaks a ton of enemy toughness bar, but sort of like Nilu, her contribution depends on the other characters in your team. You won't struggle to weakness break spam in Kafka teams, but you will have to full build your teams in order to get her damage output to be top tier. But with that said, her damage is absolutely top tier in the right setups, and I'm going to show you those next. What's up guys, so I just lost my 50-50, so I can't actually make this section fixed it. So all of Kafka's best teams are going to be featuring two dot characters for the most part. There are some teams that you can use that don't have two dot focus characters. Maybe they have one dot focus character, but that's going to be on a very case by case basis and content by content basis. Basically, Kafka works best with two dot characters because she is able to constantly trigger dots and maximize her damage output. And two of the better dot characters in the game are going to be Sampo and Luca. Now, the benefit of using someone like Luca with Kafka is that Kafka is triggering physical dots with Luca. Physical dots are bleed. They are percentage HP based on the enemy and they can hit like a truck. So forcing percentage bleed on big bosses that have a ton of HP is super valuable and Kafka does a great job of that. Now Sampo actually just hits pretty hard honestly with his dots as far as dots are concerned. He's never been a character that's been able to really shine in high-end content outside of simulated universe which is honestly kind of a joke. But Sampo does a pretty good job with Kafka especially because Kafka can constantly trigger his stuff and he can re-up dots very frequently and very easily. And between these three characters 
characters, you break an absolute, I, I mean, for lack of a better term, ton, you, you break so much weakness, it's incredible. So this has been my favorite team so far, just Kafka, Sampo, and Luka, and then a healer, and I just chose Bailu here, but you can also use Locha if you have him. Locha is also a top pick for this, in my opinion. Another combo that works is replacing someone like Luka with Serval. Serval is a free four-star option that you're basically always going to have access to just by, you know, playing the game. And she has a lot of lightning dots and, you know, combined with someone like Sampo, or if you wanted to replace Sampo with Luka and go Luka Serval, that also works as well. The only thing to be wary of with Serval in this team is that Serval's light cones are going to be a little bit different from the other Nihility light cones because Serval is an erudition character instead of a Nihility, which can make things a little bit different in practice. Specifically, what I'm referring to is if you wanted to use the light cone Resolution Shines as Pearls of Sweat, which is basically a light cone that has a chance to apply debuff on an enemy that lowers their defense. Someone like Sampo can use that. Someone like Luka can also use that, but Serval cannot use that. If you decided to go with erudition characters instead of Nihility characters, that would make the cheese for the two turn Kafka ult less effective because you wouldn't be able to get that defense shred. But Serval can be useful alongside another dot. Now, something that I haven't heard a lot of people talking about, but something that I actually found to work pretty well is running Asta in a Kafka team. Now, that sounds kind of weird at first because you you might be like, well, Asta doesn't have dots. But that's where you're wrong. She actually does have dots. You just don't really see them a lot. The damage from Asta's dots is not that significant but you can build Asta in a way that does provide her a little bit more dot damage. And the way she gets her dots is either by breaking, which you know most characters can do, or by using her basic attack with one of her traces that basically gives her access to dots on her basic attack. By using a three turn Asta ult setup, you can actually afford to use her basic attack. And when you use that basic attack, you have a chance to apply burn. And that burn is a dot that Kafka is able to trigger. But more importantly than that, Asta has a party wide attack buff. And because dot characters scale off of attack, that constant uptime attack attack buff from Asta is going to be huge to increasing your team's damage and that speed buff is also going to make it so you can attack more times which means that you know more ults with Kafka more damage overall you guys know the drill speed is good so running Asta with these characters is also pretty helpful I haven't found a scenario where it's absolutely the best outside of type coverage but it is a team that you can run uh, and it's one that I've had a lot of fun with you also can two turn Asta ult but then you just basically miss the, the dot so lastly I just wanted to put in a couple more notes one thing that you can do is you can run a preservation character and instead of an abundance character. This is the thing you can do with most characters, but I just wanted to point that out. So like, for example, we have a Jappard here. Jappard's gonna basically be good enough for this team to clear MOC or one side of MOC. But another character that I wanted to talk about quickly is Himiko, because Himiko is a character that a lot of people have really wanted to be good for a super long time. And Himiko has always been like, all right. But now with Kafka able to constantly trigger dots and with Himiko able to constantly apply dots with basically all parts of her kit. And also because Kafka is able to break a lot, Himiko can break a lot and a lot of the other dot characters can. Himiko actually actually becomes a much better character with Kafka. Granted, she is an erudition, so she does have different light cones from the annihilated characters, but Himiko actually did get a pretty big buff when Kafka came into the game. I'm not gonna recommend playing Himiko all the time. I'm not gonna say Himiko is her best partner, but if you have Himiko and you enjoy Himiko, Kafka can actually be pretty solid with her. Oh, and by the way, if any other dot characters come out in the future, her teams will definitely get expanded a bit. Right now, she's a little bit more niche, but the niche that she fills is really strong, similar to Nilo from Genshin Impact. So just something to keep in mind. So now that I've sort of told you about team combinations, let's actually get into Kafka's light cones and builds because this is where things get a little bit nitpicky, but she's not too difficult to build. Kafka has quite a few light cones at her disposal, which is great because after pulling for her, there's no way you have any money left. Obviously, her best in slot is going to be her signature that perfectly caters to her since it has high stats, gives a damage bonus, speed bonus, and an extra damage over time for her to trigger. It's pretty strong and it will help you get a bunch more damage with Kafka over the free to play choices. But with that said, she still has some other solid light cone options. Good night and sleep well at high superimposition is an absolutely busted light cone on Kafka. It gives a damage bonus based on the amount of debuffs an enemy has, and since damage over time counts, at S5, you can get a total of 72% damage bonus for free. It's insanely good value if you have it. Even at S1, it's pretty good, but at S1, it's not going to be as good as Incessant Rain, which is a top pick for Kafka due to the stats that it gives. In the Name of the World is also great, and Fermata is going to be your best free-to-play choice as a patch 1.2 because of the art. <clears throat> because of the damage bonus against enemies with specific dots on them and break effect, which Kafka can take advantage of fairly well. Fun fact, by the way, this light cone's description is about Kafka having-
With that said, there's always the possibility of more Herda Shop light -like guns coming out for different pads, so I'd keep an eye out for those in the future. Now, I purposefully left out before the tutorial mission starts because I wanted to cover it separately. That light cone is pretty solid value in terms of raw stats, but what makes it stand out is the ability to loop Kafka ultimates with it. If the enemy has their defense lowered, you get 8 energy back per attack at S5. Over 2 turns, you'll have 2 skills for 30 energy each, 2 follow-up attacks for 10 energy each, and an ultimate for 5 energy back. Alone, those add up to 85 energy, but with before the tutorial mission starts, you can get an extra 40 energy over those 5 hits, meaning that without any energy regen stats at all, as long as the enemy has their defense lowered, you can use your ultimate every 2 turns. You don't need an energy regen rope for it or anything, you just get more dot procs, making tutorial mission one of the best picks if you have everything you need to pull the combo off. Now what do you need for that? Unfortunately, you'd need to either run a defense shred character or resolution shines as pearls of sweat. I don't recommend running any of the current defense shred characters with Kafka right now because their damage is based off of your teammates dots and while you can always use a character that has defense shred that's currently in the game, those characters don't have damage over time. I found it more effective to run two dot characters instead of one dot character with a defense shred character like Pela. But if you're using Sampo or Luca, you can give one of them resolution shines as pearls of sweat and if they apply the debuff from it, you can farm energy on Kafka incredibly fast and increase your damage with that free to play light cone. Anyways, here's a chart showing approximate team and personal damage of Kafka with Luca and Sampo. Keep in mind, it's all simulated and there's other factors that could change this, but it's a decent ranking to give you an idea of what to run. Kafka is one of the stronger characters in Star Rail, and I'm really glad because I want to look at her like all the time. But even more importantly than that, she's straightforward to build. At the moment, the best Kafka setup is going to be four pieces of Band of Sizzling Thunder, which gives you a lightning damage bonus and an attack bonus after using your skill. Since Kafka is going to be using her skill every turn, it's basically a big attack boost and damage boost for free. With that said though, if you saw my relic video, you know that you're more likely to find love and happiness than to get a good four piece set, so you can always mix two piece sets as well, like two-piece Wild Wheat, two-piece Band, two-piece Messenger, or two-piece Thief of Shooting Meteor. All of those options are pretty solid, and it's definitely more important to have the right main stats and good substats than to get any of the four-piece sets of these. For Orb and Rope, you have a ton of options, but the best one overall is going to be Space Ceiling Station. Space Ceiling Station gives you a huge attack bonus just for having over 120 speed, and since damage over time scales on attack, it's an amazing bonus. The only other planar sets I really recommend are either Fleet of the Ageless to buff all of your team's damage over time, or Kingdom of Banditry for some break effect. Damage over time characters are a bit different from your standard DPS builds, because dots can't actually crit. The initial hit of damage can, but the resulting hits will never crit. So because of that, you can actually end up losing damage building crit on Kafka. Instead, you're going to want an attack percent body, speed or attack percent boots, lightning damage sphere, and an attack percent rope. Between attack and speed boots, I personally recommend speed just so you can activate space healing station, but between the two with equal substat value, Values, attack can sometimes beat out speed, and speed can sometimes beat out attack. It just really depends on how long the fight's going. Lightning Damage Orb will basically always beat out attack percent for damage on Kafka. To get a little bit more specific on her rope, even in an ideal situation where Kafka breaks a ton of enemy weakness, attack percent pulls ahead of something like break effect because of her dot span. And energy regen rope isn't consistent enough to make her ult once every two turns without the help of an outside source, so attack percent is basically always the way you want to go. Luckily for substats, Kafka isn't actually too picky. Ideally, you're just going to want speed and attack percent over anything else. Effect hit rate and break effect are also solid stats to have, and you do get four stats on a piece, so you're probably going to end up with some of those, and that's actually pretty good. But you want to really stack up that speed since she doesn't need crit. Specifically for Kafka's speed, you want to either have at least 121 speed, which you can do with just speed boots, or 134 speed without her signature weapon, because those two breakpoints will allow you to attack more over seven cycles. If you have her signature, I'd aim for 136 and try to get your damage over time characters to have 137 and 138. Honestly, speed tuning of this game is a huge pain, so if you want more specifics, I'd check out the sheet that I linked in the description that shows the math and explanation behind it. Thanks for listening to my many words. Here's a quick build summary for Kafka with her best options. Oh, and by the way, if this has been helpful, I'd appreciate it if you left a like down below and subscribe to the channel. We're super close to 200k and it'd mean a lot.
There are a ton of great things about Kafka aside from her gigantic personality. One of the best things about her is that she doesn't actually need Eidolons to be a top tier damage dealer, despite what you might have heard. Also, as someone who really loves music, it's just kind of cool to see her Eidolons named after music terms. I was a really big fan of that. Her Eidolon 1 is a damage increase to her damage over time applied by her follow-up attack. And while it's definitely going to make her stronger, it's not a necessity unless you really just want to give everything to Kafka, which no, honestly, I understand. Her E2 for Tissimo essentially means very loud. It increases ally damage over time by 25%, which is solid for overall team damage, especially if you play Kafka with two other dot units. E3 is a skill and basic attack increase. E4 is going to give Kafka two energy back when enemies are hit by her shock damage over time, which is small and single target, but can be a pretty dang significant increase in ultimate usage against multiple targets. E5 is an ultimate and talent level up for more damage overall, and E6 is a massive multiplier increase on her shock from ultimate, technique, or follow-up attacks. It also increases the dot by one turn. So here's a comparison of total damage with her signature light cone and different Eidolons. As you can see, E1 is going to be her second best Eidolon, and E6 is going to be her very best. So the E1 is actually pretty tempting. In my opinion though, going for her light cone is gonna basically always be better unless you fit a very specific criteria. The damage increase you'll see going from a free-to-play light cone to her best in slot is pretty significant, but even if you have other great light cones, Kafka's light cone is still solid and complements her well, and can also be used on other Nihility characters for its stats. It also technically costs less pulls to get the light cone, so that's just something to think about. If you don't have Incessant Rain or S5 Good Night and Sleep Well, and if you aren't doing the two-turn ult with Kafka, I'd recommend going for her light cone over Eidolon 1. But if you have either of those light cones or are spamming the two-turn ult with Kafka and the Pearls of Sweat light cone, then E1 will probably be a better pickup for you. All in all, after testing this character a ton, I am really satisfied with how Kafka turned out, and I'm super happy that we now have a sort of niche for damage over time. Previously, damage over time units were definitely usable in simulated universe, but not preferred in things like Memory of Chaos, at least none of the ones we've had. And now that Kafka is here, we basically have a way to consistently enable damage over time characters and also play pretty women while doing it. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to let me know down below and uh, tell me your, I, I, I don't, what's the, what, are, are you watching anime? Do you do that? Do people do that? Tell me what you're watching right now. And remember, God reads the comment section.